wakati wa Afrika kuinuka dunia nzima yatazama uongozi bora udhabiti wetu ndio umoja tuungane tusimame rise up africa rise up africa Emerging Leaders Foundation is a non-profit organization that seeks to serve young people and take young people from the periphery of policy and decision-making processes to the center. ELF is that organization that empowers young women and men and puts them at the center to be seen, to be heard, and for them to be equipped sufficiently to make their contribution to national development. I had taken part in very many leadership roles in the country and outside Kenya. I had worked with young people, I had worked with heads of governments and, and leaders across the continent. But one thing that kept disturbing me was that either I was the only young person in the room or among the very few women in the room. And I started asking the question, where are young people? Because then I have worked with young people and I knew that there are many young women and men out here doing amazing work. She was determined to either be the change or bring the change. Then I got the chance to be elected to be the spokesperson for young Africans. And this particular day, um, I'm seated in, in this audience representing Kenya as part of the Kenya delegation. That same year, Kenya was being, um, was set to be reviewed by the other African countries. And it was really interesting. So I sit in this room and like it's really odd. There's only one woman, President Ellen Johnson Salif, the former Liberian president. No, the Liberian president then. Um, and then there were no younger people, even youthful individuals representing governments. And I just wondered, wow. How much more would Kenya change? How much more would the continent change if only we had more young people and more women in positions of leadership? And at that point, I, I really got stirred in, in my spirit to then see what role can I play to nurture many more young people to get into such spaces where they influence government decisions and you know what happens. Disturbed by the gender and generational imbalance at decision-making tables, Karen Wakoli dreamt of raising young women and men to have equal access and voice at these tables. And Addis Ababa, Ethiopia was going to be her last meeting of just folding her hands and waiting for change to happen. And so I came back to, to Kenya with, uh, with a fire in my belly to say, you know what, we need we need spaces where young people can get mentored to thrive in, in their areas of passion. And so one question after another then took me to the place where I said, okay, I have been mentored to be able to participate and make my contribution to issues of policy, decision-making processes, national development. So why can't I then make a space, create a space to allow other young people to come in and learn and be mentored, coached, equipped for them to make their mark in this life. From Addis Ababa, her burning desire brought her here, the Nairobi Aboretum. Week after week, she sat under these trees with 12 university students, coaching them through campus life. This is where it all began under trees. We used to come here, sit down with the girls, but then the mentorship was only targeting young women leaders, even though later on young men joined. But then we're just young women coming here, sitting down, learning, playing games, enjoying life together, interacting, supporting each other, and, and, and growing. And it's now 10 years. It's, it's really unbelievable. Then it was just a dream. But today, each of these 12 girls is a remarkable change agent in their communities, proud that they chart their path for the now over 10,000 young women and men that have walked in their ELF steps. I, I knew that then there was power in mentorship. 
And I spoke to a few people who were running youth serving organizations to say, can you introduce mentorship in the work you're doing? And many were like, no, mentorship is not our thing. And so I sat down and said, you know what? My life has changed because of mentorship. I know there's power in mentorship. And by then it wasn't an in thing. Many people were like, oh, mentorship, no. But then I decided, you know what? Mm, let me quit my job. I was working in the media. So I quit my job in the media and decided to start Emerging Leaders Foundation. I got into contact with the CEO, Karen Wakoli of ELF, when I was in that capacity. In my private life, I was a mentor to young people on public policy analysis issues and she came to me for advice on how to start uh, a foundation and we worked together very closely in the early days to get it registered, to get it uh, off the ground. So in the first meeting she told us about what she wanted to do at ELF and when we listened it was really a whole cocktail of things to sort out all Kenya's problems and all youth problems in Kenya. But the more we listened, the more it, it felt like her heart was in mentoring young people through leadership at various levels, whether it's at personal level or at, um, you know, uh, to be able to participate as political, in the political space. Karen had very many good ideas. She thought emerging leaders should focus on youth unemployment, which, as you know, is very important to us. She thought education and leadership, then she also was very interested in agriculture, how to get youth involved in agriculture. And then also civil service and public service. And then devolution was coming in on board. If you go on and on, then she herself wanted to go to graduate school at the same time. So the agenda was very big. So I said, let's start at the core of this institution and give it a branding. And you can't get a branding if you are too far spread out. Let's just focus on emerging leaders. And with the help of the board, the over 11 areas of interest were narrowed down to these three. Leadership development and mentorship, governance and civic engagement, and economic empowerment, livelihoods, and opportunities. But this was not all. Funding became the new headache and the founder had to work her networks to secure financing for these programs. Actually, our first funder was Ford Foundation. Then we submitted a proposal and Ford Foundation came on board and I remember him telling me that, yes, you guys are, are a small organization, you have no physical location, uh, you have no this, you don't have that, and systems and all that, but we want to give a chance to Emerging Leaders Foundation will give you this small grant just for one year. Ten years later, these board members have a lot to share about the ELF journey. Over the last ten years, we have seen this institution emerge from being an obscure national institution to an internationally recognized training center for emerging leaders uh, in the African continent. But to me, the greatest satisfaction over the last ten years has been that we have been able to train young people in governance issues at county level, at national level, at uh, commercial and also public sectors on what it means to be an honest leader who cares about the people and who delivers to the public. And I'm just so happy when I look back and I see the transformation that has happened that now Emerging Leaders Foundation is not, is not current, like it used to be then, where I was burning out and doing everything by myself. We now have professionals in finance, in HR, in communications, in programs, doing their thing, doing what they trained to do. Uh, we have a board that manages the affairs of the organization. We have an alumni association. Essentially, we're now going to the grassroots to support other upcoming youth-serving organizations, whether for-profit or non-profit, making organizations. Um, and I look at the impact ELF has had so far, and I'm, I'm really happy and humble that, you know, I stuck it out. I, I never gave up.
In Kilifi, our whole community has renewed hope because we invested in Ashraf and he chose to multiply this effect. Katika tunaweza mafunzo ambayo nimepata ni ya kufuatilizia jinsi gani county government zinavyoendeshwa kama kwa kizungu wanaita advocacy pia ni kuna mambo na mentorship na mambo na budgeting processing zote ambazo zinafanyika katika county assembly ya Kilifi. Alafu kitu muhimu sana ambayo nilipata kwa ELF ni integrity. Kama kiongozi lazima ni integrity, honesty, ilo uaminifu. I would say the biggest tools that I gained from ELF were the tools of public speaking and public speaking for a cause. Because you can be loud, you can be active, but what exactly are you saying? And so it enabled me to raise my voice where it mattered because we also had trainers who were actually communication specialists and they would actually tell us this is how we do our thing and this is the impact that we make and being a lawyer who also had an interest in communication and advocacy I think that really equipped me with the ability and the knowledge to know what to say and how to say it and who to say it to. I didn't know how to engage the county government I could see budgets being messed up um, a project is not being done at a particular village. With the skills that emerging leaders gave me, I'm able now to identify an, an issue who is responsible with my understanding of the structure of the county government. I think the fellows have been well selected, they're well trained, and I'd say they are, top, they, are, they are the top cream of leaders you have selected to be part of this team. So all the fellows, in my own opinion, have ex exhibited the best skills of leadership and they'll be the most uh, listening and supportive because they have not only done the support that we need, they have also been giving us ideas, fresh ideas on what we can do to ensure that the, those of us who are in leadership are able to move uh, forward to change our society through our different roles. Then there are those who started with us, grew to serve in high places all the way in Cardiff, but the ELF attachment called them back. This is the story of Stella. I owe everything that we have in Dadapa to my journey as a fellow at uh, Ladies of Splendor. Uh, I, I started by sharing that the idea would not have been conceptualized from my passion to what we are doing now if I did not have that uh, urge from my mentors at Imagine Leaders Foundation to begin from where I was. Such is the impact of our 10 years and these stories abound across more than 15 counties and counting. The door that ELF gave me by being a leader, it has really opened so many doors for me. Actually, so many doors. Because, uh, one, if you go even to the assembly and say, I come from Emerging Leaders to Naweza, they already know about that. Talk of other NGOs, when they come in, they say we need so some people to work with. You will never miss Tunaweza member inside that team. So uh, being a member of Tunaweza and the way it has been known for the kind of job they do, it is really making us also to be very marketable in our society. Like people believe in us, they believe that we can always deliver. Given a job, given an opportunity to do something, they are sure that these people, they will do a great job. And that role that ELF is playing is critical, extremely critical in building responsible citizens, in promoting active citizenship and ensuring that people come into the marketplace not looking for favours, but at least knowing that the only way you're going to benefit from the marketplace is if you plant a seed. If our work and its impact of the last 10 years has been anything, then our vision for the next 10 years is even bigger. From an institutional point of view, is that the organisation has grown from just a grant receiving to a grant making organization. Because in our work, one of the things that we try to do is to ensure that young people start their own initiatives. And so if they can now start receiving the support that they need, because the work that they're doing without resources cannot be done. I look at 
10 years from now and I'm definitely sure we need a fully fledged gender program and it's, it's definitely going to happen. I see us having an ELF youth centre that is accessible to people living with disability, um, that is accessible to lactating mothers, that is youth friendly and, and, and youth responsive. I see us having a footprint across Africa. We've done excellent in Kenya can we, and, and, and I see us moving across the, the region. We've put in the work in terms of capacity, building up the capacity of teams, um, uh, building the proof of concept for mentorship and the coaching and the work that we do, uh, building a legacy of training and working with and co-creating with young people and for young people. Um, making sure and pushing for visibility and amplifying the voices of young people. So these 10 years represent the, the foundation that is then setting us up for takeoff into the future. A clear and compelling vision of where ELF Africa is heading in the next season. Footprint in all the 47 counties in Kenya. Presence in at least 10 African countries directly reach 10 million youth in Africa, have an African network of 10,000 active alumni, develop sub-granting capacity and sub-grant at least $2 million by 2032, attract at least $1 million in direct project funding annually, build a $1 million sustainability fund, establish the ELF Center of Excellence, develop internal capacity to match this 10-year ambition. Come with us, walk with us, let's go Africa.